Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be working on a little cello duet. Something easy, nice, simple for the holidays. Um, this one is Joy to the World. Uh, I went through and rearranged it for two cellos. Not terribly hard. Uh, the first line is very easy. The bottom line is easy. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a nice fun tune. Um, we have the key of D. Uh, so F sharps and C sharps are going to be a thing, and yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So, um, let's look at the first line on the, the first line of the first system. Nice, easy, straightforward. So we have this set at 120 BPM, um, nice, quick, easy. It's a fun little piece, uh, not terribly long, very simple. Uh, just something that you can loop as many times as you need uh, if you are busking or if you are playing for family or that kind of a deal. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first uh, eight measures. Go ahead and listen the first time. Uh, one, two, three. Nice, simple, straightforward, nothing very involved. The only thing uh, that I would like to work on with this one uh, there are a couple of longer held notes. Uh, the one that we just ended on there in measure seven into measure eight uh, is going to be a D. We'll take a look at vibrato. Um, the concept behind it is you are rotating your hand so that you are varying the string length a very small amount. And you get that kind of waver effect. Um, I know that through past lessons we have, uh, I have used it, I haven't really gone into detail about it, but with a nice simple piece like this, vibrato is definitely something worthy of note. Um, it's something that takes practice and something that takes time, um, but this is a perfect piece to practice it on. You've got some of those nice high notes that you don't just want to be hanging out. You want to give them some character, you want to give them some shape. Um, the general idea is the hand shape is kind of like you're grabbing a doorknob straight on. Not like you're grabbing a doorknob to open it, but you're grabbing a doorknob straight on. So grab it like that and then you check and see if it's locked, right? That is the general feel for what you're doing. Um, fourth finger gets a little rough with that. The analogy doesn't hold perfectly, but it's a fairly decent parallel. Um, what you are going to do, uh, let's go ahead and work on that momentarily uh, on the D string playing A, so first in shifted position. Okay, and then we're going to roll forward, and then we're going to roll to the middle position, and we're going to roll back. So it'll sound like this. And if you play that with your, if you play both the A string and that note at the same time. You'll feel that pulse, you'll feel that drone, it'll be just out of tune, it'll kind of grate on your nerves. However, with a little bit more speed. And then a little bit more speed. And you can go fairly fast with it. Um, you can get some really cool effects. The second finger is going to be the exact same thing, so second finger A on the D. Third finger is the same. Um, fourth finger I usually do in first position. But the, again, all four fingers generally you want. So, 
Um, that's the general idea behind vibrato. Um, that is definitely going to take some practice. I'm not going to sit here and kill you with the nails on the chalkboard practice of that. Um, but that's the general idea. Act like you're grabbing a doorknob. That same kind of hand shape is going to be where you're at. Um, and then first finger. Exact same thing all the way through. Um, yeah, like I said, keep in mind, grab a doorknob back and forth to see if it's locked is the exact same kind of deal here. Um, the other thing that I have heard uh, to help is is imagine trying to play the instrument holding your hand like in first position, and then imagine you're trying to hold a golf ball right in the, uh, the curve of your palm there, um, and then wiggle it back and forth. Um, the two ways that I've heard about it, uh, the heard about talking about the, the concept of it, uh, that kind of click in my head. Um, so definitely work on practice that, uh, work on practicing that. And uh, yeah, it should help bring something nice and simple and straightforward like this up to a little bit higher level, have a little bit more polish, have a little bit more shine to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first eight measures on the first line one more time. And go ahead and join me. Um, we'll go ahead and take it a little bit slower. This is going to be at 120 BPM. So that's our target goal. We're looking a little bit slower than that. So one, two, three, four, join me, two, three. <laughs> Um, one of the other things, fingerings, however you're comfortable with, open strings are hard to vibrato on because you're not touching anything. Um, you'll notice that my shifts in here, I'm not going to give out fingerings just because it's, if you're not comfortable doing a lot of shifts, then don't. This is supposed to be a simple piece. This isn't supposed to be, uh, this isn't an A2, this isn't a working piece. This isn't something that's supposed to work on one particular thing or a couple of particular things. This is just something you're supposed to play, enjoy, have a good time with. Uh, not like some of the harder stuff that we've been working on. Um, one of the things you will notice though is there are a fair bit of open strings in here. And so you can't vibrato open strings because you're not touching your instrument. Um, and so that's why I'll use that first shifted position, fifth position, um, for playing those open notes. <laughs> So that you can still have that vibrato on those longer sustain. Um, if you want to go the route, more than welcome to. If you don't, absolutely not a problem. Um, let's do that uh, first eight measures one more time, and then we'll move on from there. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the next chunk, uh, it'll be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the next eight bars. Next eight bars. Um, so from eight to the end of the third system there. Uh, and, and for reference, when you're reading off of um, a score like this, this is also kind of how piano sheet music is set up. Um, each of those two bar lines is called the system. Uh, in more of your trio or quartet stuff, you would have, well, trio would have three lines, quartet would have four, obviously. Uh, but each of those would still be a system. You would just have two or maybe three systems per page instead of four like we're currently looking at here. Um, that's the other reason that a lot of things are bro broken up into individual parts. Um, so you have an entire score, if you have a conductor or somebody who's like looking at how the music is put together on the overall sense, um, they would use a score with systems, and then we normally play off of individual parts, which would be you know, a cello one, cello two, violin one, kazoo one, whatever you happen to be playing with in terms of the group. So, um, 
Enough of my rambling. Let's go ahead and do 8 through 16. 1, 2, 3... Okay, nice, easy, we're not moving too fast. This is, again, we're not working on anything. This is supposed to be something that's fun to play. Um, play around with fingerings, work on shifting into different positions, um, have fun with it. This is one of the big things that I had a really hard time with, especially when I was in college, um, was getting handed really easy music and going, well, what am I supposed to, how am I supposed to work? It's like, dude, calm down, slow down, have fun with it. Um, yeah, this is definitely not a hard piece. So let's go ahead and do that uh, 8 through 16 one more time. And we will move on from there. So 8, 1, 2, 3. Moving on to 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, so 17 through 20, that four bar measure. Uh, that will figure or finish out the first half of the piece, so to speak. Uh, again, keep in mind, F sharps, definitely a thing. Um, so that'll be threes on the A string instead of twos. Um, other than that, yeah, let's keep rocking. Uh, 17 to 20. One, two, three. Nice, easy, stepwise motion. Uh, one more time. One, two, three. Okay, moving on from there. Um, Let's go ahead and do measure 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So 21 through 27, that eight bar measure, or eight bar chunk, I guess. Uh, that'll take us onto the second page on the first line. Go ahead and join me. One, two, three. things that is not rarely talked about because it is bad musical form um, that I do use upon occasion, if I'm being completely honest with myself, is the ability to use vibrato to slide you into where the note actually is. Terrible habit. Don't do it. Occasionally useful. Um, learn the rules first and then learn where, learn how to break them and then learn where to break them. Um, again, not something you should be doing. Um, but it is handy occasionally. So, um, let's go ahead and do that section one more time. Uh, yeah, 21 through 28. One, two, three. Played this before. It was it, uh, earlier in the, the stuff that we were playing. Uh, repeated callbacks, definitely a common thing in music, uh, especially from this time period. Um, let's go ahead and do 29. Let's just go ahead and do 29 through the end. Like, this is not anything big. We've already seen this repeated descending figure. <laughs> seen this before. Again, not terribly hard. Um, let's go ahead and do 28 to the end. 
Um, go ahead and try to work on that vibrato if you are comfortable with it. If not, work on it afterwards. So, one, two, three. Nice and easy. Uh, let's go ahead and take it from the top for the first line, and then we'll get to the second line, and then we'll start putting some stuff together. So, um, first line, all the way through from the beginning to the end. One, two, three. Second line. Now we're reading the bottom line in the system. Make sure that you're paying attention for that. I am terrible about swapping lines when I change systems. Um, <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, just following a line, hopping down to the next one. I see sheet music. I start playing. Oh, I am on the wrong line. Um, something to keep in mind. Something to keep an eye out for. Um, it is a thing that I'm well known for, especially in like group rehearsals. It's kind of a pain, but it is what it is. Practice, 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 and not sight reading things while you're trying to rehearse with three other people. Um, <laughs> practice first. So um, let's go ahead and do the first eight measures on the second line. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more involved still. There's absolutely nothing out of the ordinary that we haven't seen already. Um, so let's go ahead and give that a look. It's going to sound like this. Actually getting a little funky with my shifting there, but it got the point across. So let's go ahead and take a look at those first eight measures. Go ahead and join me. One, two, three. Keep in mind, F sharps, those are going to be extended fours on the G. Um, those will definitely get you if you're not paying attention or you don't have them marked previously. Um, the only the only real weird thing in this entire deal is that uh, E sharp that we've got in the first measure and it comes up once again later in the piece if I remember correctly. No, I take that back. Everything else is uh, normal. So, yeah, this is the only really wonky, weird thing is to make it fit what's going on. So, 
Uh, let's go ahead and run through that one more time. Uh, second line, first eight measures. One, two, three. Okay, moving on from there, uh, we do have some eighth notes and some dotted quarters finally, so we have something a little bit more rhythmically interesting. Um, the next... So the next eight bars uh, are going to sound like this. Pardon me, I have the hiccups. So the next eight bars are going to sound like this. One, two, simple, straightforward. Um, since we are lower and we're not hanging out on notes quite as long, we've got a little bit more busy work. Um, I'm not quite as focused on making sure that I'm vibrato. Um, usually people will hear the top line and then everything else gets kind of muddly and indistinct and then there's the bottom line. There's only two lines playing in this, so the bottom line does get a lot more attention, but it doesn't get as much attention. Um, so yeah, something to keep in mind. Go ahead and join me, uh, 8 to 16, and then we'll move on from there. 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. Measure 17 through, where did we stop last time? Uh, 17 through 20, uh, just to finish out this particular phrase. Um, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three. So go ahead and join me on that one. Uh, 17 through 20. One, two, Three. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do the entire first page up to where we just stopped. Uh, I didn't do that with the first line because it's you know, nice and simple, but let's go ahead and tie that back together. Uh, measure one through measure 20. Go ahead and join me. One, two, three. especially when you're playing duet stuff and then as you get into more complexity and more layers, is usually the melody is in the top voice and then the bottom usually plays something that accompanies and um, improves the melody through harmony, through uh, rhythmic variation and that kind of stuff. So you can see some of the melody in here, in this bass line. However, you'll also notice that there's a lot of kind of weird notes that if you were just reading it and playing it solo wouldn't make a lot of sense, but when you play them together, it just clicks. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, especially playing the cello, you generally get the lower notes. Um, you don't get quite as much melody usually, um, but you get some really cool supporting stuff. So let's go ahead and do uh, measure 21 through 28, because that's the next chunk that we really have set up. Um, that is going to sound like this. One, two. <laughs> Go 
ahead and join me on this one. We'll play that a couple of times. Uh, 21 through 28. One, two, three. Okay, right, let's do that one more time. Um, you do have, you can feel some of the supporting stuff uh, when you have the and the. Uh, you're outlining chords um, and kind of setting the feel and, and cementing what that chord is doing as the top line is playing over the top of you. Kind of a cool deal. Um, so one more time, 21 to 28. One, two, three. <laughs> And then uh, 28 to the end is again, nothing really out of the ordinary. Uh, we've got a couple of, uh, in measure 37, 36, 35, we've got an interesting figure. It's not hard, but it's... Um, that repeated notes that are thirds apart is helping outline the chord that they're shooting for. Uh, because if you look at it, the first note in 35 is a uh, C sharp. Then you have an A, and you're playing an E over the top of it. And that would be an A major chord. Yeah. That would be an A major chord. Um, so when you see repeated notes that are thirds apart like that, especially in the bass line, uh, you're helping cement what the chord is doing, which is kind of a cool deal. Um, that's getting into kind of the music theory and music composition. So um, let's go ahead and do 28 to the end. There's really nothing that we haven't run across or that is terribly hard to sign for you. So 38 or 28, my apologies, 28 to the end. One, two, three. The C string, in my mind, is wildly underutilized in a group setting. Um, it's just, it's nice, it's low, it cuts through everything. So, we have hit the end of the piece. Um, let's go ahead and take it up to our finished tempo of 120. Go ahead and join me for the first line, and we will take that to the end. One, two, three.
let's go ahead and do the second line, so the baseline, again at 120 BPM. And then at that point, you will have recordings for which to practice along with and to play along with. Um, so double check the tempo. Second line, one, two, three. <laughs> You have two individual recordings uh, so that you can play along, um, play with the top of them, play along with them. Um, I would recommend working on playing the first line over my bass line, and then I would also recommend uh, playing the bass line under my lead. Um, being able to, to work on that and to kind of figure things out is, is super critical. Um, and with this piece, it's nice, it's easy, you can tell exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, the other thing is, is it is, at least for me, it is so lovely when a piece locks in and you are playing along and everybody's in sync. Um, unfortunately, this is not a live recording, uh, but working with a recording, you have perfect repetition every single time. Um, so you know that the, if, if you're playing at the bass line, you know that I'm not randomly going to, to jumble on the top line and then kind of everything breaks down. Um, you can just restart that section, um, or that, that chunk of the, the music and be able to drop right in if you wish to be. Um, this is also a good place to work on, um, dynamic phrasing. Um, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any markings, any fortissimo, diminuendo. Um, I don't even have any musical markings in here at all. Um, partly because this is a great chance with a tune that is very common. Uh, once you hear it a few times, you'll you'll know what's coming, you'll know where you're at, that kind of a thing. Um, but experiment with dynamics and experiment with how, especially playing with another person, dynamics can radically change what the piece sounds like. Um, so if you want to play the main, if you want to play the main melody, the top line over my bass line, um, <sighs> Try making some parts loud. Try throwing uh, crescendos in in strange places. See how that changes the character of the music. Um, and don't just work on going louder and louder. Also work on playing softer and softer. Um, especially with a, a stronger bass line like this. It can really do interesting things where you can just barely hear that main melody coming through. Um, some of the orchestral works that I've done have, have played with that significantly and it's, it's been really eye-opening. Um, I hope the vibrato was eye-opening, if nothing else. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. There's a bunch of different little like mental tricks, you know, the, the doorknob thing, the, uh, the golf ball deal. Um, there's a bunch of different things that I've run across to, to help explain how you're supposed to do it and what you're supposed to be thinking of to kind of get that, to get it to click in your brain. Um, everybody's different. Everybody has their own their own kind of stuff going on. So um, if neither of those worked for you, do some digging around online, see what you can find. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it and there's a bunch of different tutorials and that kind of stuff on YouTube. So I would recommend looking around because vibrato is a very useful tool to have in your toolbox.
Well, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I know this isn't a super in-depth and in intense musical selection this time around, but at this time of year, like we've got enough stress in our lives. Working on something super hard and trying to get that down is, at least for me around this time of year, not really the right move. So um, I hope this is good and relaxing for you. I hope it is um, something that you can pick up and enjoy and not have to stress about um, and have a good chance to, to work on some duet stuff too. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, from my house to yours, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Y'all take care, stay safe, enjoy yourselves out there.